For mine, I used an orange and a lime. And in this bag, I have another orange, a lemon, and a lime that I made. And when mine are finished, I'm going to be putting them into this bag. And that's why I like this bag, because it has the large holes. It won't cover the scent. And I'll be able to hang this bag. They make great gifts. For this crochet project, you'll use your 6mm crochet hook, a pair of scissors, the tapestry needle, and the yarn. If you like the yarn, this color instead it's by I love this cotton also has a free pattern included the color is pink teal and orange here's more information about this yarn 100% cotton it's a gorgeous color so for this project, you're only going to need one skein of yarn, and I used 100% cotton yarn. So I'm not going to show the main way to make this bag again, because I have a separate video tutorial. It's called the Crochet Super Quick and Easy Beginner Vegetable Market Bag, and this is the direct link to the YouTube video tutorial. And I show step-by-step -step how to make this blanket. I mean, not blanket, this uh, market bag. For mine, though, with this craft that I'm going to show you, I'm only going to make a chain of 30. So I'm going to make a lot smaller bag for this one. I don't need the big market bag. So again, I'm going to start mine with a chain of 30 instead of um, 55 in the video tutorial, the separate video tutorial that shows how to make the market bag. If you only have one stitch remaining instead of two, instead of, in the video tutorial, I ended with two stitches remaining, so I chained six. This time, since I only have one stitch remaining, I'm going to chain seven. And the rest is just made the same way as the, video, the other video tutorial. I'm snacking on some of my Easter cake that I made. I show the recipe for this in my Crochet Orchid Flower video tutorial. It's at the end of the video tutorial. This is the first time I actually made this cake and it's really good. I actually like it better. It's good uh, warm, but I actually like it better cold. So mine turned out really beautiful. I love this tie-dye look for this bag. And for this bag, since I'm making it smaller, in my other video tutorial I made two panels. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to make one panel, and then I'm just going to fold it up. And then I'm just going to sew the two sides together. So it's a smaller bag. And then once you, we're going to make the top, but once the top is made, it will scrunch together. And then you'll have it hanging, which is what we want. So for mine, I just made a total of 17 rows. Then I folded it up and I'm going to sew down the sides. So I just used my tapestry needle. In my other video tutorial, I made a half double crochet border. But in this one, I'm just going to sew it together. So if you want to make the half double crochet border, you can just follow along with my other video tutorial. And then for those that just want to make the smaller bag like me, just take your tapestry needle and just go in and out along the sides and sew it together. And repeat this on the opposite side too. Then I just turned it inside out. And then I'm going to show you a different stitch for the top of this bag. So just make sure that you have the top of the bag, the right side is facing you. And then the top of the bag, you're going to start in one of the chain five loops at the top. So this is 
the chain 5 loop, chain 5 loop, chain 5 loop. So go ahead and go into one of the chain 5 loops to join your yarn. So I'm just going to bring up a loop. Make sure you have enough loose yarn in for tying a knot. And then just chain one. And then just tie a knot. And I start the same way in my other video tutorial. So now, just going to chain three. And then my knot is more towards the center, so I'm just going to make three double crochet. And when I come back around, I'll finish up with two more into the same chain five loop. And I'm going to go ahead and bury my loose yarn in, so I'm going to make a double crochet. So that first chain three counts as one double crochet. I just made my second and my third. Then I'm going to go into the next chain five loop and make five double crochet into the same chain five loop. So I did the same thing with my other market bag. So after this round, I'll show you the other stitch. I'm going to change it up just a little bit. So go ahead, finish making your chain your five double crochet into each of your chain five loops. And then when you get back to where you started, come back. So now I'm back to where I started. I have this little space here, so I had the same little space on the opposite side, and I just went in that little space and just made two double crochet. I did the same thing on the other side. And then here, I'm back to where I started. I want to finish making two more double crochet into that same space to make a total of five double crochet in the chain five loop. Then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first double crochet that I made. So now I'm going to show you a different top that you can make for your bag. So the first thing that you're going to do is chain three, one, two, three, and that's going to count as your first double crochet for this new round. And you're going to make one double crochet into the next two stitches. Then you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, and make a double crochet into the next three stitches. So skip three stitches, make a double crochet into the next stitch, and then we need one double crochet in the next two stitches so that we have a group of three double crochet. And this is the pattern that you're going to repeat all the way around. So I'll make one more with you. So I'm going to start with a chain of three. I'm going to skip three stitches. One, two, three, and make a double crochet into the next three stitches. And this is what it'll look like. So go ahead, finish going all the way around back to where you started, and then come back. So now I'm back to where I started. So I'm going to make, I have an extra stitch in there, but I'm just going to skip over those stitches and make a slip stitch into the top stitch of my first chain three that I made. Then I'm going to chain three one, two, three. And then you're going to turn your work. And then you're going to make two double crochet into that chain three space that you made. And 
Then you're going to chain three. You're going to skip over the three double crochet on the, from the previous round and make a double crochet into the chain three loop. And you're going to make three double crochet into that same space, so the total of three. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. So now I'm back to the beginning and I ended with a chain three and I'm going to slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that I made. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then I'm going to show you how to bury your loose yarn ends. So just take your tapestry needle and then put the loose yarn in onto the tapestry needle and then you just kind of weave it. I'm going to weave mine into the same color. So I'm just going to take and go through and weave it. I'm going to go a couple of directions. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut the loose yarn end. So go ahead and bury any loose yarn ends. So this is what my bag looks like so far. It's turned out really pretty. Now you can decide if you want to weave a ribbon through the large holes at the top and then tie it with a ribbon at the top. But I'm going to show you how to make a little tie to go at the top of your bag. So we're going to make a chain. Just take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then we're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show you four of them. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. For mine, I made a chain of 80. And I just wanted to show you something with the stitch. So if you want to, you can go right down the center of the stitch and just make your single crochet that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn and you're going to be working into the second chain here. So you're going to turn the work and you can see that on the back of the stitch there's this little loop in the back. So this is the back of the stitch and then here's the front of the stitch. So instead of going right down the center of the stitch, you're going to be going into that back loop on the back of the stitch. So you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and you're going to go into that back loop bring up a loop and then make a single crochet and then you're going to go into each back loop bring up a loop and then complete a single crochet and it just makes a little bit of a different design with your cord that you're going to be using to tie the top of your bag if this is too hard for you you can just go right down the center of the stitch and make your single crochet that way too both methods would work. I'm just trying to show you a little bit of a different method. So again, you're going in that back loop of the stitch. Bringing up a loop and then completing a single crochet. Show you one more and then I'll let you finish on your own. So you go into that back loop, bring up a loop, and then make a single crochet. So go ahead, finish making your tie and then come back. Then when you reach the end, go ahead and just finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through just to bury into your work. And then you have a finished strap 
and you still have plenty of yarn left over. I mean, it looks like you could almost make another one of these, but um, I haven't tried it. But yeah, you have plenty of yarn. You only need one skein of yarn for this project. Then I just take and tie a knot with the two loose yarn ends, and then you're just going to bury them into your work. with your tapestry needle. For my strap, I brought both loose yarn ends, buried them into the strap, and then I'm going to tie another knot. This is because in the strap, sometimes it's easy for the loose yarn end to come undone a little bit, and so I don't want the loose yarn ends poking out. So I'm just going to tie a little knot three times, and then I'm just going to trim it close to the knot. And then that will just bury the loose yarn end into the strap and help prevent it from uh, coming loose. So now you're just going to find the front of your bag and I'm going to take the um, strap and go through the large holes and just weave it in and out all the way around back to the front and then both straps will come out and you can um, measure both ends pull on it so that they're even to get them to come out the strap ends to come out of the same hole you may have to skip a couple of uh, double crochet groups of three on the side of the bag that's what I did to make it come out even and then you have a little strap that you can pull to close the top and then you can just take and tie the strap into a bow for hanging. I'm going to show you how to make this bag. It has a little tie at the top that you can tie a little bow and then your bag will open up. It has a wide opening. This bag is approximately 9 by 10 inches, so 10 inches in length and then 9 inches in height. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make these pomanders. They're really neat. They um, smell really good. Mine aren't completely done. They need about four to six weeks to completely dry. These are the first ones that I've ever made and it was a lot of fun so I wanted to show how to make them in my video tutorial.